is a very, very important um, topic, certainly to the, not only to the blood service, but to the overall health system, as we're looking at quality across the board. On July 29, 1998, my son, Tiama, was born. That night, he received transfusion. Um, he's now whatever the age is, I have no clue. But um, <clears throat> he had three transfusions before he left the nursery at the university hospital. And now he's big and strong, never really been sick again, playing football in Canada. Blood transfusion, as we have alluded to earlier on, it is life-saving, but it does not come without its risks. And from donation to the actual transfusion process are, are associated with risks. And these include, for the purpose of hemovigilance, includes all type of um, reactions. Um, they, these may be e even non-reactions, which are just incidents, near misses, errors, that you may pick up in the laboratory, deviation from, the, from operating procedures, um, and accidents that may be associated. And so the importance, therefore, of immovigilance is clearly every drop of blood counts. Um, and the whole aspect of immovigilance, if we should try to seek to define what it is, it is about the whole aspect of um, surveillance. And I see my colleague on my extreme right, who is in the middle of that. Um, and it's the whole, the whole tree, from the donation process straight through to processing, the transfusion, follow-up after transfusion, monitoring along the way, and to the aspect of development of, the, of recommendations to prevent occurrences or recurrence. So therefore, so what's the goal of hemovigilance? And basically the goal is on a four-legged stool, um, safety, patient safety, improved improvement in quality system, efficiency, and quality of care. And this is just a clear demonstration. Safe blood, blood transfusion practices must be performed at all times. So, hemovigilance system require, and it is largely determined by the structure of the blood system and by the health system in ex by extension. It is dependent, therefore, on, on having each unit of blood traceable from donor to recipient and vice versa. Monitoring, reporting, and also we have to take into consideration the whole involvement of all stakeholders um, so that we can have the appropriate coordination and collaboration. And these stakeholders include the Ministry of Health, which is key, the blood transfusion service, the hospitals, professionals, public health authorities, regulatory agencies, patients, and donor groups, and might I add, volunteers. Leadership and governance is essential, essential in every form of, 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 um, of, health, of the health system, and we know that leadership in government is one of those fundamental pillars of health system strengthening. And by transla translation, it is key to every blood system. So it's a responsibility of, health, of, the health, of, the, of the Ministry of Health to establish a national blood system that responds to quality, safety, and sufficiency. It is to provide that type of leadership and governance that will lead to development of national policies, plan, legislative and regulatory framework, as well as develop a systemic, comprehensive system of surveillance under which the immovigilance plays a very important role. We know that the importance of having national advisory committee. Some people, some may refer to as national, national um, hemovigilance committee. Human and financial resources are also key. And of course, the development of standards and definitions in line with international recommendations. Other steering role of the Ministry of Health is to define exactly what we mean by hemovigilance and what will it capture. It could be looking at the characteristics of what needs to be reported on, whether it's going to be a mandatory reporting, voluntary or mixed, the coverage, are we only looking at donors, are we looking at recipients, are we looking at the clinical practice across the spectrum, 
the products, as Dr. Taylor just mentioned them a while ago, the type of events. Are we going to cover all events or just the serious ones or the not, seri not so serious ones? Um, are we going to be pointing fingers and say it's your fault or my fault? Or are we going to develop a system in which we use that really as lessons learned in order to prevent uh, worsening? And of course, the whole aspect of the collection and use of data that's important to drive the, drive the system along. In order to ensure efficient hemovigilance, traceability is important, the structure, monitoring and evaluation, methods, methods of um, data collection, validation analysis, have in place the necessary guidelines, a quality system throughout, and implementation of corrective actions. Coordination is absolutely key, and again, the Ministry of Health would play a steering role in the whole coordination process. And it's very important to recognize that hemovigilant must operate at different levels. We have the national level, we have the institutional level uh, in terms of the blood survey, we have the institutional level in terms of the clinical services across the health sector. It's very important that the ministry establish that kind of framework to ensure that the system can work cohesively. In the whole coordination process, and this is where the blood service play a very important role, establishing links and communications, education and training, coming back again to collection, management, and review of data, 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 identifying those gaps and weaknesses that exist, ensuring that recommendations don't just go on a shelf, but are put into practice production and dissemination of reports and to act on those reports and the development of a rapid alert system to prevent worsening action and having in place also the whole aspect of periodic review, monitoring and evaluation. What about blood products? Of course, the blood service has that very important role of donor hemovigilance. It's important to recognize and to act quick, quickly on the clinical management as related to donors. The whole process of monitoring, reporting, investigation, analysis, implementation of policies, guidelines, the protocols, the SOPs, and of course, the epidemiological surveillance of donors, the post-donation information and look back. identification, record keeping, ensuring that we capture all those near misses and the errors, abnormalities in the particular blood products to see them and remove them quickly, trace each unit of donation, being able to respond quickly to adverse reaction that may be reported on the clinical front. It's important, as I mentioned before, because we have to take corrective action and to prevent worsening outcome. The training, 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 training assessment of staff, and to have that liaison and that coordination between the blood service which produces and the clinical service that uses. Along the clinical chain, you know we have a number of different functionalities. We have the clinicians, we have the administrators, we have the various um, technical services. At the hospital level and other healthcare facilities, um, if you don't want to call some of them hospitals, but some of the time they do um, require blood and blood product transfusion. The whole aspect of patient hemovigilance and the early, er, quick assessment of patients to ensure that you're able to detect very quickly whether or not something may be going on. Reporting, correct identification of patients, their samples, the blood products and appropriate labeling, standards. How often do we see things happening and then we check the standards were not followed? Traceability and documentation of transfused products and that they are always in the patient's records. One must be able to respond and recall and look back. There should be active participation in hospital transfusion committees 
who should really be the local vigilante in terms of understanding what is going on and making rapid and quick um, recommendations at the clinical level. There should be regular transfusion audits and um, there needs to be maintenance of mechanisms to coordinate the clinical services with the blood transfusion service. So therefore, if we, had a, if we had checklists as to what is necessary for a hemovigilance system, the first big heading would be leadership and governance, and under it would fall, ensuring we have a national policy, plan, legislative and regulatory framework, advisory committees, adequate human and financial resources cannot go unlooked at. Standards and definitions, um, ensuring that there is appropriate traceability and ensuring that we have quality system throughout and a mechanism for corrective and preventive actions. When we look at the organization and coordination, identification of who our stakeholders are and their responsibilities, the whole organization of the system, the coordinated links, clearly defined roles and responsibilities of each party, Education, m and &E. In terms of the donation and provision of blood and blood components, as mentioned before, the whole aspect of donor hemovigilance. Again, come the whole thing that we have, we have, we're hearing over and over, being able to identify and follow the policies and procedures, uh, reporting on errors in a timely manner, and um, certainly in the post-donation period, to having that quick, and precise look back. Clinical transfusion, of course, the patient's hemovigilance, that's a recognition of the patient, the clinical management, m and &E, and ensuring that we follow the appropriate guidelines, the hospital transfusion committees, which will play a significant role. And of course, the importance of the coordination between transfusion service and the blood service, and the, and the, the hospital and the transfusion service. I just quickly want us to look that in the United Kingdom, there are the serious, the, the shot system, serious hazards of transfusion, um, which covers the blood services of England, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales, and anything that happens within the NHS. This came about in, in 1996. It's an independent institution. It collects, analyzes um, reports, events, and it produces recommendations and have them disseminated throughout the United Kingdom. And it is so skilled that it also does monitoring and, um, and evaluation. In the United States, it is the biovigilance um, system, which is a public-private system between, especially between the CDC and the AABB, but also covers other um, systems that have to do with organ and solid organ and tissue transplant. And the real goal is to enhance patient safety and protect health while also reducing overall healthcare related costs. They look at recipient hemovigilance, donor, tissue and organ, cell therapy biovigilance. In Canada, it's a, it's a Canada Transfusion Transmitted Injury Surveillance System, TTIS. And basically, as you see there, what they do, um, information is collected turned over to Health Canada for there to be action. This is generally the, the matrix of the reporting mechanism that exists in Canada. As you can see, there's something which is absolutely mandatory within a particular period of time. So, what about Jamaica? Yes, we do have a framework. We do have a framework, and a number of us here participated in the whole development of the Jamaica Standards for Blood Services. And this, uh, you see, I have there soon to be published. Um, it was finalized last year. It is an excellent document. And I was just saying to Dr. Scott earlier on that what it has in it is exquisitely broad and has those components which make our responsibilities, if, the, if I want to have a better word, awesome. It, is, it provides a framework for hemovigilance but also provides a framework to establish policy, legislation, and governance with regards to the blood service, strengthen coordination, 
the whole aspect of re-establishment of the National Advisory Committee, hospital committees, and monitoring and evaluation. And I think the system, the blood service, the country, the government through the Ministry of Health should seize on that particular opportunity. So as I go down into the whole conclusion, hemovigilance system requires effective leadership, governance, adequate resources, the incorporation into the national blood and health, poli health policies and systems. Established through, this will be established through a stepwise approach. We can't try to do everything one time. There must be engagement of the, the of stakeholders. We must establish efficient organizational arrangements and ensure integration within the in, with institutional quality management systems. And of course, develop a system of confidential and non-punitive um, framework. Hebrew vigilance, as we say, is an integral part of the quality system. Right? It covers the donors, the process, and the recipients. And Hebrew vigilance helps to identify priorities for transfusion safety and monitors effect of preventive measures. Hemovigilance actually works. Thank you.